That's my favorite saying. Don't poke the bear. Don't poke the bear. Damn, people. The bear can bite your head off and shit down your neck. Don't poke the bear. Somewhere deep in the Ozark woods lurks the two people everyone tries to avoid the most. If you're not careful, they may find you before you find them. <laughs> 2 p.m. Uh, December 22nd, 2021. Grandma went to the grocery store to shopping before Christmas uh, and left me here because I don't go I don't do well without, around people at Walmart and the grocery store and stuff. I just, so I stay here. It's safer for everybody. Uh, but anyway, I come across this one. Uh, CIA advisor warns U.S. is closer to civil war than we think as generals warn of 2024 coup. This is uh, a black conservative perspective. I believe this young man's name is Greg. I believe that's what his name is. If it's not, I apologize. I apologize, not Greg, if your name's not Greg. I know your name's not Bill, so I guess I could call you not Bill, but uh, I think his name's Greg. I think I saw that someplace. Anyway, uh, I've actually been warned, warning about this. I mean, we're, we're, we keep moving closer and closer and closer to an actual shooting civil war, and I honestly think that uh, the, the Democrats want a redo on the original civil war because it was them that started it they started it to begin with and they started it over the control of the black population and now they're still doing the same goddamn thing they're trying to control the black population and the black vote and i honestly believe that they're willing to go start a shooting war to do so i just i on it in my heart of hearts i believe that uh, that's the reason why they want to get rid of our guns. That's the reason they, they're getting us the masks and the, I mean, it's everything. It's all control that I honestly believe that they want a shooting civil war where they can win and then they can just reconstruct the whole United States the way they want it because they don't like it the way it is. And they have it. The Democrats have not liked this country the way it is since 1861 i mean that's just actually it was before that but that's you know 1861 i mean it all started with bleeding kansas before the civil war that was a prelude of the civil war i mean they are willing to if they want their way no matter what and they're willing to kill people to do it so the difference between the the right and the left the democrats and the republicans or the conservatives the the democrats or the left are willing to kill people to get what they want and the right we're willing to die to protect what we have see that's the difference we're willing to die to protect what we have and you're willing to kill for what you want that's the reason why all these cr crime is so high and all of these blue cities and blue states because the the liberals the democrats are willing to kill for what they want you know the the conservatives we will kill ourselves trying to achieve what we want in the form of working ourselves to death you know and and dying of stress and all of that you know uh, a higher suicide rate but uh you guys will kill for what you want and we'll die for what we want so that's the the biggest difference uh, the biggest safeguard is is we're the ones that still have the guns so that's that's the, the the biggest plus that we have on our side and as much as you're wanting to control that you can't control it enough so that's the only saving grace of this country at this point as far as i'm concerned is the fact that it was not for the such a high portion of this population being armed the democrats would already be declaring martial law and and uh 
literally locking us down with the military. That's what they want. That's what they really, truly, in their hearts, they wish that they could call out the army and force us to do their their, their, their the, everything that they want. But uh, because we've got too many, too many of our civilian populace has is armed and wet, willing and ready, able and trained, we'll, we will die to protect our freedoms. And he'll kill to take them away. But anyway, let's get to watching this. Let's watch, see what he has to say about this. I, uh, I, I got some doubts about where this is going to go, but let's see. Because I'm thinking this is probably the left. This is probably somebody that is coming out of the CIA. So I do not think that this is a conservative person saying this because most conservatives would not say this out loud like I just did because we do not want we don't want that point to arrive so we you know we did the more we stood the way things the more you talk about something the more likely it is to happen so we don't want to talk about a shooting civil war because we don't want it to happen but by God we won't walk away from it all right guys so there's a cia advisor out there trying to sell a book uh that is essentially telling people that the u.s is on course for a civil war right we're closer to a civil war than any of us would like to believe she says now again keep in mind this is an advisor to the cia okay so when i hear something like that and i think about the cia now, you know, the CIA, they kind of specialize in civil wars, right? Specifically orchestrating them to overthrow democracies, right? Like we've been doing in South America and Southeast Asia and the Middle East for a long time. But, you know, I'm just saying, right? When I hear a uh, CIA advisor and they say something like that, uh, my ears poke up and, and I got to listen just considering what we all should know about the CIA and their uh, shenanigans overseas, Right um however i i gotta say this um i take this with a grain of salt and the reason why is because she references this concept of democracy eroding away in the united states and that has been a talking point that left-wing liberal media has been pushing that is really cold for um stop trump from winning in 2024 right that's what it's really cold for let's keep talking about january 6th and stop trump from winning in 2024 no matter what right so i take the things that she's actually saying with a grain of salt but regardless i think it is um fun and um worthwhile to have a discussion about her theories and the things that she's saying even though i think a lot of it is kind of bs and it's just propaganda so without further ado she actually did an interview on cnn and, and i hate to show this cnn clip but that keeps me from reading to you guys well, tell you right there if it's cnn is uh interviewing her that it's something that they're wanting to push it would you know it uh, has to be uh a leftist agenda for cnn to cover it in a positive way and evidently they're highlighting this so or it's what it appears so far so we already know that it's a a, a democrat talking point and one of their uh, uh, terror notes, you know, or or or, or, or fear mongering is what I meant to say. It's just them more fear mongering. You, you've got to vote for us. You've got to keep us in office because if you don't, those those nasty evil Republicans will bring out their guns and they're going to start a revolution in there. And if we be prepared, because if we win in 2024, because they expect to win with try, and there will be a coup. I bet you that's what they're saying. I bet you that's what they're saying um of her uh discussing her book and, and her hypothesis here so let's watch the clip and then i'll give you guys my opinion according to a washington post editorial data from the center for systemic peace finds the u.s no longer technically qualifies as a democracy after the trump administration years it's somewhere between a democracy and an autocratic state Barbara Walter is a professor of international relations at the School of Global Policy and Strategy at the University of California, San Diego. She joins me now, and I'm delighted. I mean, when, when we look at the research... Okay, it's a professor at 
uh, uh, University of California, San Diego. So we already know that she's a libtard, that she's uh, uh, she's not she's a, she's an activist for her point of view. She's not a scientist. This isn't a scientific study. Uh, she already has a bias towards a uh, uh, predetermined conclusion. So, no. I mean, it's going to be fun to listen to and fun to hear their talking points. But uh, if it's basically, if it's anybody that's going to start the Civil War, it's comments like this because she start. you've got all these radicals on the left they're already afraid of this shit, and then she starts talking about it. And then the next thing you know, you've got these radicals on the left are going to uh, act upon it. So, according to the left's version of hate speech and incendiary uh, speech, this is what she is. Let me pull this down. She's inciting violence just by fear-mongering the, uh, the, the high probability of such violence. So, under their guise of controlling speech, a hate speech, this would fall under hate speech. It's frankly frightening, and, and you conclude that the U.S. is, quote, closer to civil war than any of us would like to believe. How close? Well, I've been studying civil wars for the last 30 years across the globe. And in fact, the last four years, I've been on a task force run by the CIA that tries to predict where outside the United States, a CIA that tries to predict where outside the United States, a civil war, political violence and instability is like to, like, likely to break out. And we actually know now that the two best predictors of whether violence is likely to happen or whether a country is an anocracy, and that's a fancy term for a partial democracy, and whether ethnic entrepreneurs have emerged in a country that are using racial, religious, or ethnic divisions to try to gain political power. And the amazing thing about the United States is that both of these factors currently exist, and they have emerged at a surprisingly fast rate. What's remarkable is see because uh, they say because of what Trump did and, uh, and now the the government's taking control. But Biden has done more of that than anybody. So actually, she's true. She's correct in her statement as far as this becoming a, uh, 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 run by the the government itself and one party as opposed to a democracy, which we're truly not. We never were a democracy. This country was not set up as a direct democracy because the founding fathers knew better. So that's another one of those twists that the left, we're no longer a democracy, but we never were one. See, so, yeah, we're no longer something that we never were to begin with. Get over it, people. Quit lying. Quit lying to the populace. If you can't win by telling the truth, then you have no business being in power. Is the research isn't based on sentiment, it's based on metrics and markers and signs and facts that the US uses to determine the state of other countries' democracies and proximity to upheaval. So if the US were looking at another country and saw these signs, what would be the US evaluation of that country? The US would look at that country and we would put that... No, okay, see, this is another thing. They're making it sound like that this matrix that she's using is the one that the government uses. No, she is on a committee that uh, uh, consult that the government consults with. What do you think? And then they got another, what do you think? Her committee uses this matrix, and this is what they come up with. And this is one of many evaluations that the government takes and looks like looks at to determine what course of direction to take. She's making it sound like, and he's making it sound like, that her matrix is the one and only matrix being used. I guarantee you it's not. It's just like the climate change thing. The matrices and the, the models that they use to predict this horrific uh, global future that we have, this global weather future, is going to be so terrible that we're not going to be able to survive. 
That's just one of many that they use. And if you take their, on the, on the global warming, you take their matrix and their model and flip it and try to show us what we already know has happened, it doesn't match up. Their program cannot, what well, we would say predict, but it's not predicting because it already happened. When you run their model backwards, it does not match up to our historic weather. So if it cannot match up to the past weather that we know happens, how in the world do you think it's going to match up to the future? It can't. Oh, stupid ass people. But anyway, on this, this her matrix, I guarantee you, is not the only matrix. Hers is only one of many. And this is the conclusion that she's come up with. Now, I don't like bashing the messenger. I like studying the message, but you also need to examine the messenger when she is the one that's promoting this BS. So I want you to look at her apartment or house or whatever as she's doing this interview. It looks very much like if this is her house, she lives alone. She doesn't have a family. That means she has, her whole life is twisted up in this one thing. Her whole life is wrapped up and dedicated to this one thing. So she's vested in this. She's dedicated her life to this. So therefore she is going to risk everything. She's going to die with the lie. Because that's what they do. She's going to die with the lie. Now, anybody wants to do any research and prove me wrong, go right ahead. I, I would love for you to. But I'm just telling you from, from my observation skills and from what I know of these college types, because I spent over eight years in college, and I spent a lot of time teaching, and I spent a lot of time around these type of people, I can guarantee you that more than likely she lives alone, and her entire life is wrapped up in this. And this is what she's dedicated to her life. Her, she has dedicated her life to. And she will die with the lie. Because she does not want to believe that she's wasted her life on a, on a fallacy. So she will double down and triple down whatever it takes to pr protect herself and her ideas country likely at risk, we quote unquote risk of civil war, the United States is pretty close to being at high risk of civil war. And once a country is at high risk, the task force puts it on what we call a watch list. Countries um, that the agency wants to watch very closely because they believe sometime in the next few years, that country is at high risk of descending into instability or political violence. Well, I, you know, I think most Americans automatically assume, truly believe that democracy is sacrosanct uh, in this country, that the system is solid and safe and impervious. What do you say to them? How do you punch through complacency? I, I... But, but it's not safe because you've got the left that's trying to destroy it. They're trying to talk, turn this into a socialist country where the government controls everything and just like just like in, in the, the Soviet the people were allowed to vote but the only people that actually got elected into office were the people that the government wanted in there you know so no they the, the left is already stealing elections now and so they're so they're the ones that are trying to destroy what little democracy this country ever had now, this this ought to be classified as hate speech. If they want to classify their bullshit stuff as hate speech and incendiary speech, that's what this is. Because they're trying to incite their 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 viewer base into action. Hmm. What I say to them is we all wish that the United States was a strong democracy. We all see it that way, but the reality is just not true. Um, the United States has been declining as a democracy for the last five years on every measure. There are multiple different data sets that measure 
democracy in various different ways, and all of them have showed America in decline. And in fact, the main measure that the task force uses to predict political violence, it comes from a data set called the Polity data set. They have actually classified the United States for the very first time as an anocracy, mm. um, not a full democracy, not a, a partial democracy. Some people call it a hybrid democracy. Fareed Zakaria has called it an illiberal democracy, but it is certainly not considered on par with countries like Switzerland or Canada or Denmark or Japan. Um, we are because those aren't democracies, people. No. See, yeah, no, we don't. Th th those countries that you just get listed are not democracies. So if that's the standard that you're using, then your matrix is foul to begin with. Because you're comparing apples and oranges. We are the closest thing this world has currently to a true democracy. And we never was one to begin with. But these other countries are not democracies. They're modified socialist countries. They're modified socialist countries. Jesus. Get your facts straight. And you're supposed, this is what they're teaching our children. This is what they're teaching our young people in college. No wonder our society's so fucked up. Christ. Where's, where's, where's Kitty? Kitty. Nice thoughts. Nice thoughts. Nice thoughts, my little doo-doo kitty. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm sorry. Nice thoughts. Nice thoughts. Jesus. We are considered, we are no longer considered the world's longest democracy. That ended in January of 2021. It ended in January 2021. Really? Really? <laughs> right? What do you guys think that's in reference to? Uh, um, January 6th? Probably. Again, and this is why I say a lot of this stuff, I only can take with a grain of salt. Because it is really just propaganda to continue to talk about January. It's not a grain of salt. You need a full fucking bucket of it. You need to go, yeah you, yeah. you need one of those great big Himalayan blocks of pink salt and sit there and gnaw. You go down, go down to, to Tractor Supply and get you a salt block and lay it there on your desk. And every time one of these morons start flipping their lip, sit there and lick on that salt block. Hey, uh. six, right? And uh, basically try to stop Trump from winning in 2024. That, that, that's really what it is. Okay, and Miss Barbara Walter here, who uh, claims to be a political scientist, uh, a professor at a university, um, she acts as if the U.S. has been a full democracy before Trump, and the U.S. has never been a full democracy, okay? We've never been a full democracy, right? <laughs> we have a representative democracy, right? We have a republic okay yes. a, a constitutional republic people love to use all types of fancy words but essentially w what it just means is that uh we use elements of democracy in order to elect representatives to then uh carry out the will of the people that's how you sum it up right and that's a good thing right that's actually how yeah, we, we, we we our government is broken up into different layer just like an onion different layers different segments and we also have built-in checks and balances at the top to make sure that even if the little layers are corrupted somehow that when you get to the top that corrections good corruption will be at the top but there are checks and balances each every every side of, of it's corrupt but you got one corruption check in the and and balancing out the corruption on the other side i mean it's it's a hell of a way to think of it, but that's just the facts of life. You got contaminated water everywhere. You know, so you can't say this water's pure, that what? No, it's all contaminated. So just deal with it. Human nature is always going to be corruption. Okay? Fact of life, deal with it. People will always find a reason to despise and hate other people. You know, and if you give them a reason, which saying there's there there there's there, there's systemic racism, then you got people that'll buy into that just because they want a reason to hate people. 
and a reason to be to, 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 to claim that they're a victim. But anyway, let's get away from that. But, but our government is set up with different layers of control. And ultimately, the people at the bottom are controlling everything. Theoretically, it should be coming up from the bottom. And if you vote and take part in the system, the system will work very well. But if you let back and be complacent and let a minority of the populace vote, then you're going to get dipshit, dumbass ideas and policies like what we're going through now because the majority of the people aren't speaking. They're, they're talking out in the streets and they're talking out on the sidewalks. They're talking, well, what few can be in the grocery stores because they're not, a, and what few can be at the diners. You know, but they're, 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 they're talking, but they're not talking at the ballot because they're not educated in how the system works. Because the people are inherently lazy. You know, how, how do you think, whatever, I don't know, if I, I'm finding a rabbit hole. Let me keep, keep this going here. Maintain stability versus some of these other countries that have useful uh, democracy and they let the radicals overthrow their country. You would think that a so-called political scientist would understand that. In my opinion, the way our system is built actually uh, helps us stay stable. Now, is there some things that we can change about the way we elect our leaders uh, that will probably make us less polarized? Sure, right? But I don't think that that's necessarily a threat to democracy, okay? However, I'm not saying that uh, we uh, could not... As long as we allow special interest groups to dictate and control our politics, there is always going to be the, the division and infight, fighting period. There's, it's always going to be that way. Everything's always going to be polarized because you've always got, you're always going to have people with opposing viewpoints. And our government is set up so one group of, of viewpoints cannot dominate and dictate policy over everybody else but we're there we're getting that way we've got the minority group is trying to dictate policy for the majority now you know that's whenever you have one group being able to dictate and and hold authority over another group of people then you do not have a true representative government and right now, the left is allowing this to happen, so they are destroying the, 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 the democracy under the guise of creating democracy. No, you don't cre you give everybody a voice, but you don't give them an overpowering voice, especially if they're the minority. I, I swear, it just... I guarantee you... If, if the conservatives were the ultimate minority, you know, if, if, we, if we had the same, uh, uh, if the conservatives as an esoteric group had the same head count as our alphabet people do today, the LGBTQ, whatever, if, if we had the equal number of people they would not be listening to us the way they are listening to to the minorities now, the alphabet people. We would not be allowed to have that much control. There's no way in hell they would allow it. If the Democrats had, that's the reason why they fucking want the Supreme Court to pack it, because they want control. They don't like democracy. They don't like opposition of thought. They want to control it all. And they say anything that, that we don't like is hate speech. You're being hateful. We don't like you. Well, you know what? That is that is hate speech. The fact that you say we don't like you, you must shut up. That's hate speech. We're not telling you that you, that, uh, you have to shut up. We're not trying to limit your speech. We're just telling you that what you're saying is hateful and insightful. And it's the very definition of what you're railing against. But yet we're the haters because we're we're speaking out against you 
bean haters. That's... It's like the kettle calling the fucking pot black. That's... Not be closer to civil war than we think. Now, guys, I'm an optimist, right? I tend to be an optimist, okay? And I tend to think that based off my lived experience and me going out and interacting with normal people, um, I don't think people are necessarily at each other's throats, okay? Not the way it's portrayed in the media and on the internet, right? I, I tend to want to believe that people don't go outside in the real world and they just hate each other. Or just shit set off i didn't hear a siren warning it scared me for a minute but greg no okay greg uh dude i expect that i probably lived twice as long as you have i've i lived through the 60s and the 70s okay i'm gonna tell you right now that the left is pushing the point where they're they're poking the bear and the bear is about ready to get tired of it. So if a civil war starts, it will not be started by the right. It will be started by the left inciting a reaction. Now they will do something stupid, just like they did there in Wisconsin, and a couple, they were doing stupid shit. Stupid people doing stupid shit, playing stupid games, and so and some people got killed on their side the stupid people got killed bad situation should not have happened the reason why it should not have happened is because those people should not have been there for the reason they were which was not to protest anything they were there to destroy and cause havoc and to live the destructive life that they want to live and then innocent people who were there just trying to protect their calm way of living and protect their neighborhood, protect their city, got caught up in it. And now, oh, look at the evil people on the right, the white supremacists, they're trying to see what they're No, you motherfuckers started it. You started burning buildings. You started burning car lots. You started the destruction. Christ. So well, this is how can you have how can you have a how can you protest something without having destruction? If you don't destroy shit, people won't listen to you. If you don't destroy shit, people won't shoot at you. If you don't destroy shit, you won't get killed. I mean, cause and effect, assholes, cause and effect. Jesus, how stupid can you be not to see that? We're not out there marching around with guns looking for people to shoot. We're marching out there with guns to tell you, look, there's a line drawn. You cross the line, we will drop your ass. You know, that's what they call the dead line. You, they put a line, you cross this line, your ass is dead because we won't put up with it. You know, problem solution. You're the problem solution. Eliminate the problem. Because you can't be negotiated with because you're an all-or-nothing type of people. You will either get your way or you will destroy anything that's in your way from getting your way. And we're sitting here telling you, we will not allow you to destroy this country. We will pull out our guns. We will, we will protect ourselves and protect this country as we know it. And then when the smoke clears, we'll go right back to do it when, when the zombie apocalypse is over with. We will go right back to doing the things that we've been doing successfully until you guys opened your pie holes and caused problems. You know, that's... Jesus. Anyway. Because of their skin color, their race, their gender, whatever, right? At least in my personal experience. I don't know where you guys live, right? Maybe some parts of the country... People are experiencing that. I'm personally not experiencing that. I think a lot of this stuff is just perceived because of what we see on the internet and on TV, right? I, I could be wrong, right? There could be underlying tensions that could possibly lead to some type of uh, civil war or conflict, right? It most certainly uh, could happen. And the reasons why it could happen and the evidence for that uh, is actually from more 
left-wing movements and left-wing policies that are going on in this country that I think could lead us there, right? Contrary to what this professor and everybody in the mainstream liberal media is citing, which is basically Trump, right? Which is why I think a whole lot of this stuff is propaganda. And in the day What will start this is you're going to get multiple cities that do what Seattle did and try to set up these autonomous zones, or you'll just get riots in the cities where the, the local government will lose control and then I guarantee you, as soon as they have to call out the National Guard to multiple locations in multiple states, then you will have the, the conservatives that are hardcore to protect this country and protect their rights. They will be stepping outside their doors with their guns saying, you step in my yard. And I will kill you. I will drop you and let God sort it out. Now, I guarantee you, because I've, I've lived in plenty of these uh, uh, states that have castle laws. You come into my yard like that. But yeah, you come into my yard in an aggressive manner and I will drop you. And I won't think twice about it. Will not think twice about it. Just like those people outside St. Louis. The lawyers. They, oh, that was bullshit. That what, what, you know, they were in the right. Those people crawled over a fence into a private residential area, uninvited, and then went towards somebody's house making verbal threats i guarantee you if they'd have got if they'd have got within 10 feet of me i'd have started dropping them they were warned i would have dropped them and i guarantee you grandma been right there beside me so and, and there and i am not a minority when it comes to this mindset you know i've i've worked in all over this country and I can tell you that there is a very large proportion of people that it, once they see that shit has finally hit the fan, they, prayer, prep, they have prepared for it, they're ready for it, and they've got the mindset. So you, you guys, you, you better understand that I'm not making threats. I'm, I'm telling you this is the way it is. This is the way it is. They don't want it. So last thing in the world they want, the, the anxiety over the fact that they're going to be pushed to that limit. But there's a line that they will not allow to be crossed. You know, right, wrong, or indifferent. So, you know, it's like, it's just like, don't. I'm telling you, don't. Don't poke the bear. Because you poke him enough times, he will bite your head off and then he will shit down your neck. And then don't cry about it. Because you were warned. Grandpa warned you. Grandpa warned you. They want to talk about January 6th all day. Right? But they don't really want to talk about the violence that happened for months before January 6th. Before the election occurred. In which you had left-wing radicals uh, burning down and tearing up cities in the name of social justice right they, they never mentioned that as a threat to democracy when that is just flat out political violence right that is the most political violence we've seen in this country in a long 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 time since okay? the 60s and 70s what happened on january 6 is literally nothing compared to what has happened all last year in terms of lives lost damage impact on, on society as a whole it's not even comparable really to be and see the thing about january 6 my, from my understanding and the research I've, there was not one single protester found to have a gun. Only one person got killed, and it, she was a civilian. She was actually uh, military. I think retired military or ex, it was previously military person. But only one person was killed. There were no cops killed. No protesters were found with guns. You know, this was stupid a, a stupid thing that got out of hand.
but that was nothing compared to what was going on in these other cities. If this, if this had been, I guarantee you, if this had been a planned insurrection, it would have been a whole hell of a lot worse than what it was. It would have been a whole hell of a lot worse. This was not a planned insurrection. This was, this was a protest that got stupidly out of hand. Some stupid people did some stupid things, and other ignorant people followed suit and did some stupid things, okay? And this wasn't the, the thing like uh, 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 the air, but well, some people did some things on 9-11. No, this isn't that same level. So don't even say, well, you sound you sound just like them. And say, so there's good people on both sides. Now, quit twisting shit, people. Quit twisting shit. You know, especially when you're talking to me. Because Grandma will tell you, I'm the king of twist. I'll twist you up so many knots, you won't even know which way's up. You get in a conversation with me. Mainly because I, I educate myself on a topic before I start ranting and raving about it. More than I can say about you people. You people run off of freaking emotions. Emotions will get you killed because it causes you to make stupid decisions. Quite honest with you. It's just not. And we keeping it a whole 100. Now, January 6th was still bad. I still think that it was probably one of the worst days for the conservative movement that I can think of in a long, long, long that time. That it was. It was not a good look that was not a good for day. the conservative movement. And the Republican Party. It just wasn't, right? It, it was a disastrous day for that. It accomplished nothing. It was wrong. Okay, it was wrong. But it gets way too much attention from... But, but the left has made it worse than it was. They've, they've, they've ta taken this anthill, this molehill, and turned it into a mountain. It wasn't as bad as they made it, as they are making it out to be. And they're finding that out, but they're not... Just, they're, they're just like the Russian collusion thing. They're going to keep writing this story for as long as they can. It wasn't true then. Is it true now? The mainstream liberal media uh, versus what happened last year, which, again, in my opinion, was much worse and had a much larger impact. Again, both are bad. But, again, I'm just so annoyed by the fact that people are literally only talking about this one isolated event instead of talking about a whole bunch of events that happened last year that we still have not really came to terms with. And honestly, in my opinion, those protests and riots that happened all last year was a pretext to January 6th. It was a precursor. And the reason why is because it established the precedent because the Democrats were cool with it, uh, that, hey, you know what? It's okay to use violence to achieve political goals. But every action has an equal and opposite reaction. The left is going to uh, uh, start... Uh, 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 protesting violently and burning shit down, the right eventually is going to too. You know, because you guys have, you've got, like I said, you drew the line. This is the new standard. We don't, we won't believe, we won't follow it until it comes to the point that we just say, you know, all right, you know, we're going to play your game and you won't like it when we play your game. Because when we play your game, we play to win. We don't take prisoners. So to just remember that if you want to establish the, we're going to set back and we're going to watch you guys establish the playing rules. And then once we understand what the rules are, then we'll start playing by your rules. And I guarantee you, you're not going to like the outcome. Because when we play, we play rough and we play for keeps. Goals, right? And because that was done all last year and Democrats low-key endorsed it, I think, again, that kind of paved the way for something like January 6th to happen. So, again, they want to talk about January 6th all day, but they don't want to go back to what led up to it, which, in my opinion, was these so-called social justice uh, protests slash riots, okay? That basically, again, made it okay to say, hey, you know what, let's use political violence to achieve uh, 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 our goals, Okay. When it should have been condemned from the get-go, if it was condemned and controlled from the get-go, when people said, no, 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 this is not okay from the get-go, and you shut it down when it first started happening, I don't think January 6th would have happened. No, nope, I don't think it would have happened at all. No. Nope. Period. When we're talking about organized movements, 
that have resulted in widespread damage across the country, just objectively speaking, this is an undisputable fact. 99% of that has come from left-wing associated movements, whether that be Black Lives Matter or Antifa. That's just a fact, okay? So when they go out here and they say this stuff, but they never mention that, I automatically, you're discredited in my head, right? I'm automatically listening to you. Okay, you're propaganda. You're trying to sell your... This is probably really bad to say, but the left will destroy property without a thought. The right won't because property costs money. Property to, to replace property and infrastructure and clean up a mess like that costs too much money. So when we riot and stuff, we don't destroy we don't destroy and burn property because that's foolish. Uh, if our riots are going to get violent, we kill people. People are easy to replace. There's more of them made every day. So you know, highways and bridges and buildings are hard to rebuild, you got, I mean, and it costs a lot of money. We're replacing people, not hard to do. So that's another thing, that's another point of view that you need to understand. The left will burn down buildings. You know, we developed a bomb that we can set off in the atmosphere and destroy every living creature within the blast radius and not, and not break a glass doing it. Now, how fucked up is that? But we'll do it. And we don't want to have to rebuild that city and rebuild those buildings. They're perfectly good buildings. We can reuse them. We can repurpose them. So actually, we we are the environmentalists because we're not going to destroy buildings and infrastructure and destroy the, the solid, tangible things that the people need to live. We're going to destroy the things that are caused. We are going to destroy the infestation of cockroaches. Not the house that they live in. We won't destroy buildings. We'll just shoot people. We'll kill the, eliminate the people. You eliminate the problem. The buildings aren't the problems. The car lots are not the problems. Police cars are not the problems. You know, we don't. We, we don't do that. That's stupid. Because we respect money. We, we you know we respect the hard work that people put in. What we don't respect is stupidity. So if we see a stupid person, it has less, but he has less value than the car they're in, or the car they're standing next to, or the sidewalk that they're standing on, as far as the right's concerned, because stupid has no value. You need to understand that, people. You need to understand that. You may say that we're crazy, but no. Eliminate the problem. When you have an infestation of cockroaches, you do not burn down the house. You kill the cockroaches. You people burn down the fucking house, and the cockroaches just spread to the neighbor houses. And then you got to burn down more houses. You know, no, just kill the fucking cockroaches and leave the house alone. book you're just pushing the whole january 6 thing because we got the january 6 whatever going on right now and i don't even like talking about it because again i think it's i think it's, it's silly it's a witch hunt it, it's something they want to keep going on and talking about forever because they don't want to talk about anything else they don't want to focus on the failures of the biden administration um so yeah i mean if you're talking about left-wing political violence i think that's definitely uh a, a symptom of um you know, a, a country that could be on the verge of civil war. I mean, she talked about ethnic entrepreneurs uh, emerging in the country using racial, religious, and ethnic divisions to try to gain political power. <laughs> Who does that sound like? Right? Does that sound like anybody on the right? <laughs> that sounds like some left-wing movements to me. I'm just saying about her own standards and definitions and her own risk factors. Uh, it, it sounds like you need to be paying attention to the left-wing movements. I'm just saying. Uh, interestingly enough, um, there's more to this. As uh, three retired military generals recently penned a joint op-ed in the Washington Post where they raised the alarm over their shared concern about, quote, the aftermath of the 2024 uh, presidential election and the potential for lethal chaos inside our military following the turmoil last year. 
In short, we are chilled to our bones at the thought of a coup succeeding next time the generals wrote. Okay, so again, we have the military here talking about how they're afraid of a coup, right? They're afraid of a coup succeeding. Okay, and, and again, I, I got questions about this because again, in my mind, I'm thinking a whole lot of this stuff is, is propaganda. Okay, um, what are you trying to say? Are you trying to say in, in the next scenario, uh, some uh people who uh don't have weapons are actually going to be able to overthrow the government? I, I just don't see how that happens. I don't see how they're going to be able to, to accomplish that, right? I don't think that's going to work. And the only thing else that they could possibly be talking about is an internal military coup or something like that. Which, that could be possible. I'm not going to lie, right? The political divisions in our country can be so deep um, that that could possibly happen. But again, what they always really try to do is they try to specifically associate that with Trump. And again, I think that's, again, where the propaganda comes in, in my opinion. Now, some other things I think that could possibly lead to a civil conflict is some of these left-wing policies, right? Like these mandates, okay, that Biden's trying to impose at the federal level, okay? If he was able to impose these mandates, on uh you know the whole country I, I do think at that point uh you would see some type of civil conflict right because again a lot of people on the right are just kind of like i just want to live my life i just want to do my thing i don't really want to bother anybody or harm anybody i just want to do me right i just want the government to leave me alone however people on the left are like no 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 you have to do what we tell you to do and if you don't do what we tell you to do then we're going to force it on you right we're going to arrest you lock you up in a cage and uh you won't see the light of day OK, so, I mean, again, when you're talking about the threat of civil war. Um, to me, in my opinion, I think the authoritarianism that is coming from the Biden administration, again, Trump didn't force that on people. Right. The authoritarianism that's coming from the Biden administration trying to make people live in a way that they don't want to live. Yeah, that's a threat. In my opinion, that is something that can make people rise up and, and to say, hey, you know what? We had enough of this. Right. We don't want our rights taken away. OK, but again, all this stuff is mainly associated with left-wing movements right again this is contrary to what's being pushed in the mainstream liberal media which is trying to make it seem like everything is coming from the right and i'm not saying there's no potential threats on the rights there's cuckoo for cocoa puffs people on both sides that's of right, that's right right obviously cuckoo for cocoa puff people on both sides and, and trump said there are good people on both sides not everybody on the left acts this way the problem is is the platform of the left this to happen so they won't stop it the left will not eradicate the cancer out of their own body the right will and when you guys say well what about the rights the white supremacists those are not when you say all right you are not talking about conservatives you're talking about your alternate version of what the right is and your alt right are still leftists they're right, they're the right leaning portion of your leftist group, but they're still leftists. They still have a socialist, high mind mentality. They are not individualists. They are socialists. They belong on the left with the rest of you. They are a subgroup of your own idiotic, bizarre, radical people. So, yes, there are radicals on the right white supremacists, neo-Nazis, that is not them. They are still socialist people. They belong on the left side of the fence. You guys keep throwing them over in ours because you can't find enough trash in our yard and our yard is so much cleaner than your yard it makes you look so you throw in your trash into our yard and claiming that it's us. No, it's not. It's your freaking trash. Keep it to yourself and control your own trash. But, you know, it's just you guys will not control your radical element because your base, your platform is, is that everybody has their rights to live the way they want unless those that the way they want to live goes against your way of living. These people don't go against the way you want to live. The right does. We're conservative. We're individualists. We're not uh, communists. We don't believe in the communal uh, 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 properties of society beyond the family. You know, so you guys are the ones that need to control yourself because if you can't control yourself, 
and the fire gets out of hand as soon as it crosses over into our yard we're going to stomp it out because we're not going to let you burn our house down you can burn your house down i don't give a flying fart but i guarantee you the flames start getting close to my house i'm going to stomp them out and so will every other conservative because we will not allow you to burn our house down with your stupid keep your stupid to yourself if these if these democrat cities want to can start burn themselves down i don't care let them that's their policy that's what they want to do the conservatives that don't want to live there can move out you know come to the midwest bring your conservative values with you you know you leftists that don't like it tough that's what you voted for. Stay there and clean your own house. Don't bring your garbage over here. I have no problem. I believe in states' rights. If you want to be stupid, you can be stupid. If you want to allow people to ramp, run rampant through the streets shooting each other, I don't care. That's what you want. You do you. Let me do me. You know, let us do our thing. You know, so... No, if there's a civil war, it will be started by the left because they can't keep their fire under control. It gets out of hand, and then we're going to have to put it out. But again, in my opinion, the people on the right aren't really trying to push their way of life on other people, right? And I think when you're trying to push your way of life on other people, I think that's what really is the biggest threat in regards to the only thing we're pushing on other people is leave me alone. That's the only thing we're pushing. Leave me alone. I will leave you alone if you leave me alone. As soon as your stupid starts affecting me, then I'm going to push back. Keep it to yourself and I'll leave you alone. I don't. You're fun to watch. Yeah, you're fun to watch until you affect me. And then once you affect me, no, you're no longer fun to watch, and I'm tired of clean, having to deal with your mess, so I'm going to put a stop to it. My time is valuable. I don't have time to waste with your stupid. A potential civil war. However, overall, um, I'm optimistic that this won't happen, and I'm optimistic that a lot of the divisions in this country are really just in the media, right? It's, it's a perception that's given to us by the media and is on social media, right, and on the Internet. Because people can say what they want on social media and the internet. However, I, I don't know if that is... They're perpetuating it because they want it to happen. That's the reason why they're perpetuating it. They will keep pushing it until they make it happen. This will happen eventually. It has to happen. Because there's no way of shutting them down now. They have to, they have to self uh, implode. They have to self-destruct because if we step in now and put a stop to it, then it looks like, well, we were on the verge of victory. So that's the reason why you said, no, we have to let you implode. We have to let you self-destruct and then we will have to come in and clean up the mess and contain the mess. And you and us containing the mess of you guys self-destructing, you will call it the civil war. No, we're just trying to... to Contain the destruction. Best itself in real life outside of some extreme factions on the right and uh, some extreme factions on the left that are much more prevalent on the left, in my opinion. Regardless, I'm optimistic that this uh, won't happen and that uh, hopefully uh, these political tensions will, will cool down a, as we move forward here into the future. But, you know. Creating division in this country, uh, especially for the mainstream liberal media, is profitable. So, who knows if if, the, if we will ever get back to a point where um you know we're actually united again as a country? Maybe, maybe not. As long as the Democrats keep pushing their authoritarian agenda, I just don't see how we can get there. But uh, hopefully, again, that doesn't lead us to civil war. Let me know what you guys think. Make I think I took it a little further than he did, but him and I think alike. Other than I see it as being inevitable. He's a optimist. I'm a pessimist. I, you know, I don't, I don't trust people. And I, and I, I, the only thing you can count on from people is stupidity. 
and they're good. If you if, if you can count on that something stupid's going to be done and something stupid's going to happen. So when you look at the overall picture, what's the smartest thing to do? We all get along and move along and go along and no problem. That's the smart thing. That won't happen because it is the smart thing. What's the stupid thing? Think of the stupidest thing that you can imagine happening, and it probably will. Yeah. So anyway, that's a good segue to letting you guys go. I've been doing this for an hour now, so Grandma will have to whittle it down again. Love you guys. Hope everything's going great. And like I said, enjoy how bad it is today. It'll be worse tomorrow. Love you.